Okay, welcome back everyone. Now we know what kind of edible alphabet is here. So Tyler, an American creator who is very famous in Korea and his Indian friend Nidhi, they have created a company of snacks that are in the shape of the Hangul alphabet. And so it was launched on Hangul Day and they had many pop-up stores and their menu has included some different flavors. So there's like sweet flavors, like vanilla and chocolate, but then also kind of nods to Korean dishes, mm. like kimchi and mugwort mm. and garlic. Mmm. Oh. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you just are convinced. <laughs> and so it has opened up this conversation of, because they are foreigners, do they kind of understand the importance of Hangul? And, mm. Do they understand kind of where it needs to go in the future? And are they the best spokespeople for kind of promoting the Korean alphabet mm -hmm. globally with their snack brand? And so many people are eager to try out these cookies. And some people think that maybe a Korean would have been a better representation. But kind of the founding of this company has meant that it's very easy to see that Korean culture and not just music and dramas and movies like we mentioned before, but also the history of Korea is becoming more well known yeah. around the world and might be more interesting to people that have some kind of interest in Korea already. So do you think you might try out the cookies? <laughs> Um, the, maybe the sweet flavors. What, mm. I just think <laughs> eat cookies, so automatically I thought sweet, and then you said kimchi and garlic, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm. They're uh, kind of like cracker flavors oh, more yeah, than cookies, yeah. 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 I mean, I think, yeah, with crackers, and yeah, definitely. I think that's a really good concept. Um, mm. I'm surprised that they're getting some kind of pushback just because they're foreigners. Mm. Like, you would have thought that Korean, some Korean would have come up with this first, but. Yeah, right. I mean, if they're sharing the culture with them. Mm. In my imagination, I imagine that they were like the animal crackers yeah. from, from the US, but just in like little yeah. and, and see it, the shapes. <laughs> Very like cute. That, I'm, I'm interested in the mugwort ones. Mm -hmm. I really like oh, yeah. the green duck flavor. I'm, so I'm intrigued to try that. So how about you? Would you buy them for a friend or family member? I think that they would be really delicious, mm. like, um, and I think that friends would really enjoy that because you cannot get it like domestically in, in like in the U.S. Mm. and they would be like, "Oh, this is cute!" and a talking piece if they serve it to their friends later, like, "Oh, a friend brought this for me from Korea." These fancy little letters, like, "Oh, look at these shapes!" So I think it would be a talking point. Mm. What about you? I think maybe they would be a good gift for like younger family members so mm -hmm. they can enjoy. When you were younger, did you ever have the letters that you could play with in the bath <laughs> and like stick them to yeah. the tiles? I, I imagine that maybe if you had a younger brother or sister or a younger cousin that was kind of interested in uh, learning Korean maybe mm -hmm. or Korean culture, you could spell some words Instead out like, with them on the table when you go to visit. Stop playing with your food. Stop <laughs> spelling with your food. I think it would be really cute. So thinking about Korean food, so mm. we mentioned some of the flavors of mugwort, garlic, kimchi. What Korean snacks or dishes are popular abroad? I have seen a lot of mukbangs by like foreigners who are trying the buldak uh, Oh, right. I saw so many because I guess it was trendy to like see how spicy of a food that you can handle. So. Yeah, that's the one that I've seen the most. I don't know about other things. Mm. I think tteokbokki, tteokbokki too. I think especially for people that enjoy dramas, tteokbokki is so synonymous with like date food, oh, I think, yeah. and they want to be cute and try it out. And also, I think uh, Korean food abroad is very expensive. Yeah. And so tteokbokki is quite cheap to make. So when you translate that to kind of American or English prices, it's still quite affordable. Mm -hmm. But if you have like ribs or some kind of soup because the gr ingredients are imported, mm -hmm. those dishes are really expensive, right. especially soju. I heard that in America, it's like 15 or $16 yeah, a bottle in some- Yeah, they're quite expensive. Yeah, right. So when Koreans travel abroad, I think they have a, a rude awakening of how expensive soju is abroad effect craving Korean food while mm -hmm. they're away. 
Hmm. So we hope that you enjoyed it today. Uh, maybe if you have the time or you see them in the grocery store, you can try out Hangul Gwaja and give us a review to whether they're delicious or not. Uh, don't forget the vocabulary from today. Make sure that you try to incorporate it in your life if you can. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Gastronomy. Gastronomy. Encapsulate. Encapsulate. Palate pleaser. Palate pleaser. Mythical. Mythical. Commendable. Commendable.